Last week, as Delhi NCR air quality dipped to very poor and severe levels on urban reality, we brought to the table the key issues leading to air pollution in the region and the government's inability to make any significant impact on air quality. This week, guess what? Air pollution is back because the World Health Organization or WHO has finally put it in black and white what we've been always been very afraid of the harm this toxic air causes to young children. The WHO report says every single day, around 93% of the world's children under the age of 15 years breathe air that is so polluted, it puts their health and development at serious risk. Many even die. The figure of such tragic deaths amongst children was 6 lakhs in 2016. Now let's place this in the context of India, where 14 out of the world's 20 most polluted cities are. According to WHO report, India tops in death of children below five years. In our country, we have lost at least one lakh children below five years to air pollution. Now, that's the big irony of what's really happening here. Let me introduce you to my panelists who are, of course, here to talk about what the health implications of air pollution can be. We've got leading health specialists, doctors, and, of course, research scientists, Dr. Deeren Gupta, senior pediatrician, Sargangaram Hospital. We also have with us Dr. Anand Mohan, head of the Department of Pulmonology and Sleep Medicine at Ames. We have Sunil Daya. He's an air pollution campaigner with Greenpeace India. And we have Pulash Mukherjee, senior research associate, Center for Science and Environment. I should be going to the doctors before, but I am going to go to Polash because, Polash, I remember last year, same time, doing this discussion, and you said, Manisha, you can play the same show next year. I can promise you. That's how bad things are. Yeah, I mean, we've been seeing this uh, from 2016 onwards, around these, the time of November. That's when it peaks. That's when everyone talks about it because it becomes visible then. Uh, you have the smog in the air and uh, not to mention that this air, toxic air quality is affecting our health and our children's health through the year. Hmm. So it's not just this period we have to be worried we about. We only wake up in this period because we can see it. Before that, we can't see it. So let me, let me come to Dr. Mohan. Dr. Mohan, tell me, is there physical evidence, more patients coming into AIMS, more children coming into AIMS over the years? Yeah, definitely. I think uh, in this uh, uh, particular season, there has been a visible change in the number of OPD visits, definitely. And maybe I would say a rough estimate, 10 to 20 percent more, roughly I would say. That includes adults as well as children. Mm -hmm. So no doubt and uh, most of them are those who already have some pre-existing lung disease. They come with uncontrolled disease, worsening symptoms. They need more medications. Then there is a segment who previously were healthy and now they are coming with new onset of respiratory symptoms. There are some who come with persistent respiratory symptoms. So there is no doubt that the number has increased and even I would say hospital admissions mm -hmm. probably also are, are behaving the same way because the same people... So there is concrete come. medical evidence that the incidences of respiratory diseases are going up both amongst adults and children. Yeah, sure. And you've seen that trend happening. Dr. Dhiran Gupta, let's come to children per se because this report actually focuses on children. Gangaram was one of the first hospitals in Delhi to have a pediatric ICU which you were setting up. I remember 15 years ago when my child was very sick and going there. ICUs today in this city, even if the numbers have multiplied, are always full. They say that it's extremely hard to get and get your child into an ICU in the national capital region. So that's how many children are falling ill in an affluent city like Delhi. Um, see, I tell you the trend of past 20 years. I'm mm -hmm. here for past 20 years in intensive care and I'm doing pulmonology also past 20 years, certainly past 5-6 years, I'll say the disease has, diseases has changed. It's a mainly respiratory diseases and when we talk about kids, not only patients with pre-existing lung diseases, they are on the rise and they are getting severe problems and getting admitted. 
I'm talking about many viral infections like RSV infection. Past three months, it is on rise, and mm -hmm. they are presenting off season. This is not a particular season where we get diseases like bronchiolitis, and now we are seeing the uprise, uh, uprise of is the Is there a connection with air pollution? Yeah. Do you believe yeah. that? People have studied that uh, these type of viral infections and pneumonias <laughs> are more prevalent whenever there is PM 2.5 is on rise, and uh, what people tried, they have extensively studied that if you pollute the airway, hmm. the bacteria sticks better than a, a non-polluted airway. I mean, and, uh, I know the word better shouldn't be used, but it actually sticks to your lungs sticks, more. It's four times sticks. Four it's oh four, it's better sticks of four times. Mm -hmm. So what WHO has done, it has just shown the mirror. It has it shown, shown the, the mirror. mirror. It means mm. past 20, they have just compiled the 20 years studies past 20 years and and they have compiled it systematically and they analyze it and they found it it is leading to not only morbidity mm -hmm. till now we used to relate it the pollution leading to more cold more cough more eye irritation and now they have related with not only in a patient with pre-existing lung disease in a normal population also it leads to low uh, it lowers the respiratory functions in and, utero and it affected, I mean to say a lot of things, new things, they are have, emerging. Uh, yeah, Tell yeah. me one thing, they say, I mean, and these are research uh, researchers which have proven that pregnant women, when exposed to polluted air, are more likely to give birth prematurely, have small, low birth weight children. It also impacts the neurodevelopment and cognitive, develop, uh, cognitive ab ability amongst children. Do you believe that? Yeah. Why I'm saying so, past six years, previously we never encountered people with a lot of autism and ADHD. I mean, these mm. are the diseases which are linked with the neurocognitive. Now. Every family almost now yeah. has one child which might have so ADHD. So these type of problems are emerging, I means the practice has changed. And in good affluent families, you get these type of diseases. It is really shocking. And you find almost 90% of the families have uh, nebulizers. Previously, I remember in 1993 when I started my pediatric practice, mm -hmm. there hardly any nebulizer in the whole of the department. Right. So practice has really changed over the time. Now doctors, I believe, uh, actually between zero and two years, tell parents at their first appointment that please keep a nebulizer if you're in a city like Delhi or any of the polluted cities, Dr. Anand Paul? Yeah, exactly, because I think respiratory diseases are so much on the rise. Hmm. There's so much on the rise and one doesn't know and then at this point of time, at that point of time, one wants to be ready. So one has to keep all these things, the asthmas and all these bronchiolitis and viral infections particularly, they're all on the rise actually. Just so pointing to that, uh, there, was, there is evidence of this from Indian sources. We don't look, need to look to the WHO. Last year there was a report that said that the leading causes of under five mortalities earlier used to be dysentery and diarrhea. Okay. Now that is shifting away from that towards respiratory illnesses and COPD. So there is a big shift. So that is now yeah. a bigger killer of under five uh, children, children. Than, uh, than dysentery and diarrhea which used to be uh, the leading yeah, cause. The spectrum of disease appears to be changing. The Isn't spectrum of disease is changing because of air pollution. I mean, this is shocking. But uh, Sunil Daya, this is something that Greenpeace has been saying. I mean, uh, despite all the arguments to the contrary which come from policy makers, it is a reality which is staring at our face. Now, this is definitely a reality and, and all these uh, discussions which we are doing have been happening in the research papers, in the reports as well since uh, decades and the government was till last year was not even ready to acknowledge air pollution as a health crisis. Mm -hmm. Are they acknowledging uh, uh, it now? At least coming question. up with a national clean air program, which is not at all uh, in the best form it should be, mm -hmm. uh, is an acknowledgement saying that yes, India is polluted. But when it comes to uh, these WHO kind of studies or even Greenpeace studies, the argument we hear is these are international studies and we don't have Indian evidence. Is Doctor saying it here gives the evidences very clearly. Yes, he is very uh, much Indian. Uh, yeah, and yeah. Th th that's the issue. And uh, along with uh, what we have been discussing the new disease and all those things look at the cancer cases uh, lung cancer mm. cases they have multiplied many faults in last so many years and to develop cancer doctors will correct me mm. you need 25 years of exposure to carcinogens and now people in early uh, 30s or late 20s have started is there a direct correlation dr mohan between lung cancer and air pollution because you know I read somewhere that now 60% of lung cancer patients in Delhi hospitals are actually non-smokers. Do we take that as, as an evidence that it is air pollution? 
Yeah, so that is that is well published from our country itself and even our institute that there is a significant the proportion of non-smokers causing lung cancer also appears to be increasing. Mm -hmm. So what could be the reason for that? The reason has to be something else. Most commonly it is the environmental factors. And okay. that includes most common, the most dangerous would be the air pollution and the carcinogenic effects of uh, the air okay. that they are having. So All there right. is no doubt and even the age factor that he said, that is also true that we are seeing more and more lung cancer in the more and more young age. Even 20s and 30s you are seeing which is really unbelievable. 20s I would like to add one cancer? point. Sure. Means if you go through the recent report, it's around 167 pages. I could go through almost, almost all the whole of the report and uh, what they have found that uh, lung cancer is directly noxious tumulus because of the, that is, you know, it goes with the common sense that you are mm. directly adding to the noxious tumulus <laughs> in the lung. But what they have found, if mothers are exposed and if kids are exposed in infancy, then they have found that there are more chances of leukemia development in pediatric age group, more retinoblastoma, more congenital heart disease. So it's not just lung, it's yeah. congenital heart diseases. Yeah. You could All even have organs. blood cancer yeah. like yeah. leukemia. Yes, yes. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. It, uh, you just go through the report and it's really shocking and, uh, you know, uh, presently we have got a patient of leukemia who has come from... Uh, uh, the, uh, north, that is Kashmir, and uh, she is almost non-salvageable. Means that is shocking. Uh, age 15 year old and suffering from lung cancer for, uh, from your uh, leukemia. So mm -hmm. that uh, everything was on rise, and uh, probably we need to systematically analyze in India. We always say that there are no systematic studies in India, so we close our eyes. That as mm. we, because we don't know probably doesn't things doesn't exist and if you look at the data as we are actually living in a smoky area we are everybody is smoking whether they are actual smoker or not isn't yes, it about 25 to 30 cigarettes a day in delhi that's the statistics or numbers which have been cited all right let's come to the kind of response that are you seeing uh, yes there's a national clean air program there is gap in delhi gap is only when situation becomes poor to very poor an emergency today we saw sprinkling of water but Palash, we had a expressway inaugurated in a big way saying that 50,000 trucks are not going to enter delhi and clean the air will be cleaner they will be fined heavily if they enter delhi i'm telling you at late night when i was returning from gurgaon there was a complete jam on the delhi Gurgaon Delhi Highway, come, all trucks coming into Delhi. What happened to to that? I mean, even things like that. Is there is there a policy gap? Is there an implementation issue, or is there simply not a recognition that this is a serious emergency? I think a little of all of the all of what you said. The first thing I want to say is that things are being done now, but. Things are uh, the things that are being done now. The solutions; those are not something that can. There is no silver bullet solution to air pollution. Okay. So everything will take time, and it is being done at a regional level, uh, at a state level rather, whereas it needs to be done on a regional level. Mm -hmm. So what is happening is that Delhi has its own rules, which are not uh, replicated in uh, Noida, uh, in uh, Haryana or a UP or a Rajasthan or a Punjab, right. and that is what is causing the mismatch. Even within Delhi, there are there is politics being played over what should be done, what should not be done. Right. For instance, the grab that you mentioned, that was meant to be a reactive plan. Okay. It was meant to be supplemented by something called the comprehensive action plan. This is also has been, uh, both this and the NCAP has been uh, brought into effect by the insistence of the Supreme Court. This is hmm. not something that the government Come, came it's up with. It's literally that the court is coming and saying, do it, do it, do it. Yeah. And then you have a new PIL coming in from... You know, the extra vigilant Hindus who say, why are you banning Five all letters. crackers? So, you know, you now bring bring back crackers saying that we don't know what whether there's availability of green crackers. So, even on the policy front, Sunil Daya, there seems to be a huge amount of flip-flop. My question is that when these people go and file a counter PIL or a counter argument in court, they're all living and breathing the same air. Do you think there is a lack of just probably dissemination of information on what air pollution can do? I mean, you and I are talking about it, but does an arm admi on the street know what it's doing to his lungs? I'll say that at least people in Delhi have started realizing and there is more and more awareness. But 
if you go away from Delhi and NCR, the debate has not reached the masses and people really don't know much. And the second issue with the policies is that look, look into uh, Delhi. In yeah, last I can interrupt you. I mean yeah. to say in Delhi, I live in Delhi, people feel that my house should be safe. And that's not the, the community. And this is not at even we a we fail level. at individual and community level. We always look forward for the political who are interested in statue and lot of things. And they are the poly, this pollution doesn't have a political uh, you know boundary limit. Yeah. There is no boundary. So we are at the, at a political level. We are fighting with the MCD and the Delhi government. We are fighting with the Punjab government, Haryana government. There is nothing uh, constructively done from the center that except the some uh, new statues where, from where you can see is all polluted. That brings us to all the actions. Look at Grab. Look, look at PM Task Force. Look at Niti Aayog document Breathe India. Look at NCAP now. All these documents have come, nothing has changed, and the only thing which is stopping air pollution to be reduced is the political will, because till now how many of us have heard any city, state, or the central government saying that we'll reduce pollution levels by 35% well, in the next three years? Well, at least finally Prime Minister had a conversation on Manki Bath on air pollution, if nothing more, even though it was a very limited one. You know, more than 40% of world's population, which includes 1 billion children under 15, are exposed to high levels of air pollution. A lot of it is happening in low-income and developing countries are susceptible as we see and of course India definitely falls in that bracket. When we come back, if political will is missing, then what do you need? Do you need a mass movement? Do you need people to rise up and say, look, we have to put a stop to it? Let's come back and talk about that. WHO report says that there are 1.8 billion children who breathe polluted air, which puts their health and development at serious risk. That's caught everyone's attention and eyes. But it's not the first time these risks have been highlighted. There's a journal of Indian pediatrics which uh, says that there's powerful evidence. Children growing up in polluted environment of Delhi have reduced lung growth compared to the children in developed countries such as US. They all start out at the same level, but by the time they're about eight, they probably have the same lung capacities. When they're adults, though, there's about a 10% difference between how the lungs of children in Caucasian countries grow to what happens in India. That is what you were saying, uh, Dr. Gupta, that there is a clear and you know, present evidence that air pollution can cause serious damage. My question is, there doesn't seem to be any political will. There are some, they have to make political noises because they're in the capital. But nationally, having 14 most polluted cities, there does it's not a conversation politicians are having or it's the top of their mind. So what is it that people can do? I always scared, you know, coming to this program, I always feel that uh, we have spent two hours, three hours, but uh, after 20 minutes of this program, people will forget. We, we Indians have a very short memory like Ghazni. We just flip the page and uh, now new Ghazni report one. will come and we'll forget. This is usually happening Correct. and uh, mm. the major, major, you know, can say incidences we forget. And uh, so my always feeling is that uh, Think of yourself, your family, because we are selfish uh, in nature mm. as, a, as a human being. We always think of our party, our community, our society, and my home. Mm. Okay, So let's start from our home also. So at least we can look at the kitchen from where the females start exposing and from where you seed in the negative aspect of pollution and from a new generation is already handicapped after birth. Fine. Right. So if you target the female, you get a good, at least a uh, ventilated indoor kitchen. Indoor air is indoor have ventilated Target an indoor the one. Okay. Most so basic so thing. Mm -hmm. Many females, say around 15, 16 years, they are exposed to kitchen before marriage. Fine. And they land up in some uh, some problem with the uh, some uh, fertility, uh, fertility, and that is very well mentioned in this task force. Fine. Right. Now, following that, once we ex uh, once we give them a good kitchen, good ventilated kitchen. If you use good uh, power, that is, you know, electrical or your uh, LPG rather than wood uh, or you can say cow dung. Hmm. So at least we can start with. Okay. Secondly. Clean your house, that can reduce the amount of PM 2.5 in the house itself. So these two things are the are major, be, you can say, polluters in house. Which should be immediately done. Okay, let yeah. me get uh, Dr. Mohan's inputs as well. What should people do now? 
I mean, I one think. is that look, be very careful of your indoor home pollutants. Yeah. And kitchens are one of the biggest sources which expose the women of the homes, young girls of the homes, which will cause them long-lasting effects, including infertility. Apart from this, yeah, apart, this of course is the most important to take care of the pollution in the own home. Then maybe in the immediate vicinity, for example, wherever you are staying, stop, stop throwing the garbage, stop yes. uh, burning the garbage, stop burning the leaves, uh, prevent anybody else doing, doing it. Doing it. <laughs> so that is one. You raise your voice if somebody else does it. You know, stop those. These little little things may also matter. And then, then you go on to the larger community level. Then it comes to the construction. Whenever the, the rampant construction across the city, you all know. What are the precautions RWS for the workers? can take it up on themselves. Yes. I mean, I go around in my colony pointing out and calling up the secretary and saying, can you tell this builder to spray some water on the cement? So exactly. Then, you know, exactly. you basically take more responsibility, responsibility. Yeah, exactly. of what is happening. So the precautions during the construction, what, what, for, what about the workers who are working? They include women and children. So they are also exposed. Little children. Little children. They are just standing there. It's heartbreaking. They are just playing there and they are exposed. So precautions for them, appropriate regulations. So these What about our sweepers and cleaners? Sunil, they are, look at them, our traffic policemen. I mean, you know, we are talking about our children, but these are the people who are the most exposed. They're standing for hours in this pollution. Really? And they're sweeping most of them today. I don't think Delhi MCD has even made it mandatory for them or given them good quality masks to sweep with. So we are saying, clean it for us, but you know what? Your life doesn't matter. I mean, newspapers can all die with air pollution and lung cancer. And that, that's, that's exactly the issue that we don't tackle the exposure of people at the sources where pollution has been, uh, been uh, made. And talking about, we have talked about waste and uh, people in the households and all those things. But what I would also like to point you towards that there are actions which people can take and there are actions which uh, the governments have to take. Mm. T talk about the Central Electricity Authority saying that no coal-based power plants is required to start construction from now onwards. But even then, our Ministry of Environment and Forest giving clearances. And let me tell you that we, are, we have shut down Badarpur, which was around 300 megawatt right now. Correct. But we are going to come up there is a proposal that 1300 megawatt power plant 70 kilometer or 80 kilometer aerial distance from delhi comes up in khurza and are we serious about reducing air pollution levels in, in delhi and ncr or i mean the, the air country? can't be stopped at khurza it will come into delhi and that's the issue that until unless we tackle these big industries the stubble burning firecrackers mobility and everything needs to change but we shouldn't hide the big polluters point sources of pollution that i think the government is uh, smartest behind. in hiding because, you know, they make money off industries and in the name of development, that just goes in. And that will only change when people will start rising up for their right to life and right to breathe. And, and that momentum has to start. And it hasn't level. come in because, you know, look at the ads which are coming out in the newspapers. Polash, the government is patting its back before the elections on everything. Why are you not spending money on just making people aware of the ill effects of air pollution? And what are the steps? I want to see the steps. One ad which says, these are the steps we have taken to reduce air pollution. Have you seen an ad like that? No, no. Other than an ad from the health ministry saying, please don't go out and do outdoor activities between 1st and 15th November. Yeah. That's exactly what I was trying to say. That now is the time to ask tough questions of the people who are in charge. And I don't mean that Prime Minister and the Minister only. Ask your MCD uh, councillor, ask your local MLA. Firstly, find out who they are, ask them tough questions. In 2019, pollution must be on the political agenda. Yep. It must, why, must be. Why shouldn't it be on the election manifesto of all political parties on what they are going to do about air pollution? I think... I feel... One, one, one point I want to... I fail to understand maximum foreign visits has been taken place in past seven, eight years. Fine, by hmm. the big political uh, people when they go out to say any place they find how the construction is being taken place how they have developed the cities whole city is covered with the grass there is no single uh, you know dust there can't we try to replicate that can't they feel shame when they come back hmm. means if something like they instead of, not instead, of the shame. instead of spending so many thousand crore rupees you just spend few thousand crore rupees cover your cities with the grass at least you can save 10% of the pollution. You do not allow any building to be made like without covering it adequately. 
they passed by something getting uh, means giving some well, money. I, I think government say, itself is the biggest flouter of environmental norms. I mean, we know that, and we are not talking about central government here. At state level every, bodies, every, every, everybody who's constructing, is, yes, yes. in fact, they get by, slip by the rules even easier than what the private sector does. They go and advocate for the polluters to extend the deadlines for pollution reduction, thermal power plant emission standard notification yes. in 2015. They had they to go do it in to two the years. And then that's they it. went to Supreme Court. Got them five in fact, more last years. Last year, we were fighting this case against the auto industry, and the auto industry's affidavit and the MOEF's affidavit read the same. They were perhaps created by the same person. My goodness. All right. We're going to leave it at that. Gentlemen, thank you very much for joining us. I'm just going to, you know, basically say that just raise your voice against air pollution. But to raise that morally, you've got to do your bit as well, don't you? I mean, carpool, look at the number of cars which go to the same destination. It takes a little bit extra effort, but all of us can carpool a lot more than we are doing right now. We can clearly use public transport. In a city like Delhi, there is a metro. At least on in lean phases, metros can be taken. Stop the usage of diesel cars. Private homes should not be having diesel cars. That's the bottom line. As a policy, government should be banning all private households to have diesel cars or run diesel cars. Segregate waste. Remember the fire pits in Ghazipur and the other, you know, waste uh, dump that we recently saw. It, it's crazy. You don't segregate waste. It creates methane and the worst kind of toxic gases come out of that pipe. Stop using single or stop single use plastic. I mean, that is a basic thing that we can do. You and I have to do it and report trash and leaves burning. I mean, how hard is it? Morally, if we are going to ask our policymakers, our politicians to take air pollution as a national emergency and a national agenda, we've got to do our bit. Otherwise, you know what's going to happen? It's always going to be somebody else's problem and we are going to be staying in extremely polluted cities with a air pollution and a health crisis. Thank you so much for joining me.